<laughs> the first day you're there, you feel like you're about to die. Like, why did I sign up for this? <laughs> oh, yeah. When I first got there, the first night, I'm laying down. Like, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> I've stuck for at least four years. It's Kristen Legs, Kristen with the long legs, and I'm back with another long legs production because I'm back and I'm back at back and I'm back. So today's video I'm excited to make because it's the video you've all been waiting for. Dun, 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 dun. It's about BMT, but my BMT experiments, experiments, experience, my bmt experience oh my gosh while i can't speak i'm fired and i'm a broadcast journalist fired my bmt like t-t-e-a i thought that was clever that's gonna be this little series was it was a lot i just be taking l's and then i document them all and like i documented everything that went on so if you are going to bmt soon if you're a mother who's worried about what's going on in BMT, because I get a lot of those who like watch my videos, hey mom. Or if you know you're interested in what goes on, like if knowing this is a deciding factor of you joining the armed forces, you come to the right place. So since we went through eight weeks of training, I'm going to start off week by week and I can see what I can fit into the videos because like it's a lot because it's two months of your life so zero week the main things that go on during zero week first thing you're in your civilian clothes and they let you walk around and do everything in civilian clothes so you're marching you're going to chow so you stand out and with you standing out all the MTIs know if your flight's walking by or mark well, not walking by you're marching because they're going to teach you the drum movements if your flight is marching by, they're going to look at you, pick you out, and start screaming at you for something. Oh, pause. I had the uh, unfortunate experience not to miss zero day of zero week. So zero day, my flight told me, flight 466, squadron 321st, slow, slow, kill everything below, puss on Warhawka. My flight told me that the first day they got in at they just had them running around i don't know what time they got them in but they were running around all day and by the time they went to sleep it was 5 30 in the morning no no no, it was 5 40. so everyone they're like they finished all the like yelling out like getting yelled at that child getting chewed out da 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 so they went to sleep at 5 40 that's when the mtis finished up with them and everyone gets in bed everyone's settled and then five minutes later reveille goes off so when I say my flight was shook and they thought that they were gonna have to wake up off of five minutes of sleep, but they allowed them to sleep in until like 11.30 or 12. I believe that's what someone told me, but I have no idea what goes on during zero day of zero week because I missed it because I had a day in advance to pack all my things away and get my number one pick choice job, TV and radio broadcasting. This is Airman Weathersby reporting. But uh, yeah, I missed that. So I miss zero day, but yeah, we're just walking around in civilian clothes, looking stupid, doing stuff stupid. The funniest thing I think is the not knowing how to march because marching is just walking, just stiffer. So, oh yeah, also I got new glasses. I look like I could be a member of Migos, but um, marching is literally just walking, just coordinated arm swing, hands at the position of attention, and that's it. But some people, they either can't get the rhythm right or like when we went, it was hot. So if it's like a red flag, you don't march at the position. If it's at a yellow flag in your zero week or yeah, you don't march at the position of attention. You walk at ease because they don't, they want your body to acclimate to the weather so you can adjust so you're not passing out or anything. They want to make sure like your water intake's right. And because people come from all over the world, all over the world. Well, yeah, we had some people coming from Italy and Germany. So all over the world, so they want to make sure your body's going to be used to that weather before you're doing all the high physical intense training that we do. So watching people march is hilarious because when you march, it's like, I'm about to get up and show you. I look like super stupid because I'm out here. There's people out here, I, but okay, I'm about to show y'all. It's like just left, that's it. 
but the zero weakers, they are like, they can't get the coordinated arm swing, so they're like, oh, I can't not coordinate arm swing. They're like, and, they're, and the, they just don't get it, so they're like, walk. And they walk at attention. It's hilarious. Like, looking back on, I got to see one last incoming new flight during zero week, during my seventh week. When I graduated, I was just like, wow, that really was me seven weeks ago. Your girl done glowed up. So that's fun. For the guys, zero week, you guys have the, I'm looking at my notes so I can remember everything that went on. You guys have the clipper cuts. They give everyone the world's best haircuts. When I say they shave you bald and everyone just comes out looking like eggs, I didn't even know what brother flight looked like before when they had hair and then they got shaved and everybody looked exactly the same. Like each time brother flight went to get their haircuts, they all looked exactly the same because they just shave it all off. Yeah. So guys, you have clipper cuts, that's fun. You get to lose all your hair. Might as well grow it out, you know, have something to remember. Yo, and here's something I remembered. There's the commander's brief. So they bring your whole graduating class in, or who's supposed to graduate with you, all the 16, they usually graduate like around 16 flights at the same time from different squadrons. So well, we had 16. And they bring everyone in so the commander can come and talk to you. So we had the commander's brief. So I, during the commander's brief, was about I was about to pee on myself because they said when the commander comes and you're scared you're too scared to do anything i was about to pee on myself no one you always need a wingman to go with you everywhere but they told us before they finished their presentation before the commander's brief that we weren't allowed to get up and utilize so me drinking one half no one quarter to one and a half Water bottles per hour, not to exceed two per hour, not to exceed 16 in a day. Drinking that much water after my body's not used to that. And when I drink like that, I have to pee every 20 minutes on the dot. No joke, on the dot. So the briefing was an hour long and the girls were scared to get up and be my wingman and use the restroom with me. So I can't even tell you what happened during the commander's briefing because all I was thinking about was, don't be the trainee that pees on themselves. This is perfect timing. Tell tell the viewers about clipper cuts. Clipper cuts. Never go there. It's not but. a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. Clipper oh, wait, cuts at BMT. Called? That's oh. what it's called. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said never go there. No. I'm so weak. I didn't know what that was. But yeah, they just no real pattern. Just they just mess shave up the way. They just shave you bald. <laughs> Oh. You can't ask for nothing special either. They just no, cut it off. Y'all all look like eggs. Just. Yep. Pretty much. I'm glad I didn't and have like, to go some through people, that. Some people bleed. What's from the their head? Like? From their head? <laughs> yes. When Ooh. they get their hair cut, it'd be like bubbles of blood. It's, it'd be nasty. I've never heard that in my life. Ooh. That's disgusting. Oh yeah, I said that you walk around in civilian clothes looking dumb. Who? Oh yeah, yeah. The zero week. <laughs> and, oh yeah, also, zero week, some guy who shipped out with me brought nothing. He brought the clothes that he wore and you have to wear your clothes all throughout zero week. So if you get shipped there Tuesday, it's from Tuesday until when do they first issue you your clothes? I think it's like the next day. I think maybe. not for us. I don't know. I, I might have just made that up. He did. But, he made that up. <laughs> but yeah, they um. You have to wear the clothes that you bring. So he had one set of clothes, like one pair of underwear. They don't let you go to the store because there's no time. So you have to bring at least five pair of clothes because I think it's five days before they issue you clothes. But don't bring a lot because I brought a huge duffel bag and that's too much stuff. It's. I mean, I'm, there's no time to do laundry. Like, you're just running, or, like, you're getting pushed like cattle. So there's no time to do anything. Don't, not bring clothes, but don't bring too much. Like, I brought a small backpack, and I almost ran out of underwear. But then they let us wash clothes. Yo, shakedowns. Do you remember shakedowns? 
when we shakedowns is when okay shakedowns for people who don't know as the sun sets is when you put out all your stuff that you want to keep and they let you know what's authorized for you to keep and what's not authorized yeah, mine wasn't that bad ours was freaking terrible bad. what no so our shakedowns they made the announcement over the intercom and they're like attention to the squadron attention to oh, the dormitory we only did in our <laughs> no they flight. called everybody oh, okay. they said if we have any free mtis can you please head to charlie one for shakedowns <laughs> when i tell you a flood of mtis came banging on the door and they're like stand at your locker at the position of attention and give your reporting statement and that your area is ready for inspection when the mti comes up this so is why you want disneyland this yes don't go to alcatraz <laughs> you don't have a choice but don't go to alcatraz so basically Disneyland is the newer training squadron. The 321st is there, the 322nd possibly, the 323rd. Not the 322nd. Not the 322nd? So not the 320, no, because that's still Alcatraz. The, the 331st is there too, yep. So those are the ones that are in Disneyland. Disneyland's just newer, updated. And then Alcatraz are the older, like 50 year old dorms that are gross. There's only eight showers. You have bunk beds. You have to like walk in between people when you're changing. Like when they're changing, when you get out the shower, the girls like they. When I went to Aaron's, like they like shared showers with each other. I thought that was just too much. Okay, I have compassion for the Alcatraz people because they went through the MT. Like their PT pad was dirty and stuff. But I'm glad I was in Disneyland, and I'm glad we didn't have band flight. Band flight? That's another video. What was I talking about? But shakedowns, okay, yes. So they call all the random MTIs who's like, I don't know, they don't have anything to do, their flights are at beast or something, to come scream at us. So they come assess and see what items you have and see what's authorized and what's not. And I'll make another video about what you can bring to BMT and what you can't. So we have just random MTIs just screaming at us. And you have to say, position of attention, uh what sir ma'am whoever it is airman weathersby reports his order well i haven't said that in a hot minute reports his order Whoa. Yeah, oh i didn't say trainee because oh. <laughs> i'm an airman now sir ma'am trainee weathersby reports his order my area is prepared or oh, sure ma'am my area is prepared for inspection but this is like the third day so you still don't know what reporting statements are you still don't know you can't move whatsoever at the position of attention you just can't speak so you're terrified like shaking i got checked out by our is our is our is was master sergeant rogers he was no honestly he wasn't even that bad he was just like let's let's see what you got here no one girl she got chewed out it's not that bad when they yell at you no it all they do is scream at you it's just real aggressive but it's not bad they it's that the first days are there you feel like you're about to die like why did i sign up for this oh yeah when i first got there the first night i'm laying down like, what did I do? yeah <laughs> i'm stuck for at least four years but shakedowns like random mtis come up look at your stuff one girl she was smiling when the mti was yelling at her and the mti was like fix your face what are you doing with your face why are you smiling What's here? What do you have? Can you stop smiling? Stop moving at the position. Is that a secondary movement at the position of attention? So it's just, it's stressful. It's so stressful, them yelling at you. And you're really just evaluating your life. Like, why did I join? Why did I join any armed forces if they're just going to be here screaming at me? Why am I here? They don't need me here. Someone else can be here. You're really just contemplating life. And that's why they have ECs because some people really take that yell in the heart. And it's like, you're supposed to listen to what they're yelling at you about and not internalize, like don't personalize them yelling at you. It's literally their job for them to yell at you. And it's since you signed that contract, it's your job to get yelled at. So don't internalize what they're saying. Just listen to what they're saying. Like you're supposed to mess up on purpose during the zero week. You're supposed to get yelled at, you'll be fine. But I didn't get yelled at that much. I just know that I had some stuff that I wanted to keep that I couldn't because it wasn't packaged correctly. But I'll talk about that in the other video when I talk about uh, what stuff you can actually bring to BMT so y'all aren't taking L's like me bringing useless stuff. But that was Shakedown. Shakedown is just literally any MTI. They just, it's like kids in a candy store. 
they come to rip into your soul. They're, they're, that's their sole purpose for being in your dorm at that very moment is to rip into your soul. So don't take it personally because that's what they're going to do. What else do we do during zero week? Um, so we had our first issue of clothes after. I'm just, I'm skipping around. So we had our first issue of clothing and they try to size you, they size you for clothing. And basically they're like, so as you're terrified and scared to do anything, you don't know what a, oh, if you guys don't know what a reporting statement is, it is, you should practice this while you're at home watching this if you're heading off to BMT soon. My MTI, not my MTI, oh my freaking goodness. My uh, recruiter, Sergeant Munoz, I don't know his rank. I couldn't tell you because, I mean, I didn't memorize the ranks before I left. So I don't know what his rank was. Hey, Sergeant Munoz, you see this? What's up? Also, don't let your recruits go to BMT or to MEPS. Oh my freaking goodness. Why? <laughs> don't let them go with their toes painted. I don't know how I made it through MEPS with blue toes, but I think they were just trying to let me leave. But, um, yes, my recruiter was like, yep, yeah, make sure you report, remember your reporting statement before you leave. Make sure you memorize that or you're gonna get fussed out. You literally have to say your reporting statement if you want to talk to your MTI. And it's so unnatural because you're not used to saying something before you speak to someone. So you're like, oh, excuse me, ma'am. Can I get a reporting statement with that? Can you, can you, you want to try again? You want to try again? And then you're like, I, uh, uh sir or ma'am, sir, do I look like a sir to you? Do you want to try that again? Give me a 341. And it's like, I just wanted to ask, can I use the bathroom? And all that just transpires because you got to say a reporting statement. And the reporting statement is, sir or ma'am, depending on the gender, trainee, whatever your name is, so trainee Weathersby, except that I'm not a trainee anymore, I'm an airman, reports as ordered. And then they'll look at you like, yes, what? Why are you wasting my time? And then you ask whatever question you need to ask. I'm jumping all over the place. Zero week was super hectic. But yes, first issue clothing. So they give you your clothing, they switch you up by what size you are. So I wear a size small in like the body, but they didn't want to give me size small shorts because my legs are so long and it would have been too short. But my jacket is a size, they gave me size medium short and size medium pants and a size medium jacket. And my jacket's too long because I have a short, none of this matters. Um, but yeah, they give you your PT gear, your socks for PT, your socks for your ABUs. Um, just all your clothes yes yeah, so we got our clothes and they make you shove it in this huge duffel bag and you have to walk back to your squadron when I tell you we must have been walking in slow motion and that was the longest walk of my life carrying all that stuff after not exercising exercise before you go to BMT just do it you might not want to just do it. I remember that day it was thunderstorming when we got there and we almost took a bus back, but then they made us walk because it started sprinkling. They were like, as long as there's not lightning in five miles, we're gonna make y'all walk back. We don't want y'all to lose out, to miss out on this experience. So we had to walk back all our clothes and then unpack them and they had to teach us how to fold them and stuff. Uh, what, uh. And then what else happened during BMT? Um, Oh, yes, you learn your drill movements. You learn to like right face, left face, about face. I like almost popped my knee out of place because I didn't know how to right face and left face. So I would like turn my knee a weird way. For people who already went through BMT and are watching this, you probably find this comical because I was doing it way wrong. Like, way wrong. Just a mess. A mess. There's immunizations and drug tests. So, immunizations, I remember that, because we were still in civilian clothes, they showed us video of that. So we're in civilian clothes, we get marched over there, seems like the longest march ever, just marching just takes forever because we're new and we don't know how to march, we don't know what we're doing. And they make you come in with whatever like flights you're with, so you either have a brother flight or a sister flight. Yeah, so if you're guys, you have a 50% chance of having a sister flight or a brother flight. If you're girls, it's a 100% chance you're getting 
a brother flight because in the Air Force, the ratio for men and women is three to one. So if you're, if you have two cousin flights and then one sibling flight, if you're a girl flight, you have a hundred percent chance of getting a guy flight. But if you're a guy flight, you got a 50% chance from you already being the guys of getting a girl flight. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So we walk in there with brother flight and we're all just looking at each other like all the guys are bald so we don't know what's going on they all look alike and we sit down and they hand us out our paperwork and we're scared to move and them like being with the civilians in immunizations and drug testing no drug testing was different oh, i remember that oh you have to pee again and they have to watch you pee oh that's not fun but no one popped up for anything for hours, so I, that's probably why I mixed them up. But it's like, yo, I just remember what drug testing was. No, drug testing was the longest walk of BMT, hands down. I almost passed out on that walk or something. They made us walk back like late at night. It was just so stressful. But when I say hands down, longest walk of my life, it was a good, it was a good mile walk at night it was way past our bedtime i was so tired and then immunizations that's the one that's more important because it comes the peanut butter shot i'm not telling y'all a single thing about the peanut butter shot because we're going to make another video about it and y'all can watch that video to find out about it but the immunizations they have you do your peanut butter shot and there's a way to get out of the peanut butter shot but i'm not going to tell you guys until next video so stay tuned um and then there's the other shots like hepatitis A and B, they like give it to you in a series of shots. And they just wanna make sure you're not getting like strep throat and staph infection and stuff like that. Because when you, <sighs> I'm gonna make another video. See, there's so much that went on in BMT, but there are so many dirty people. Pause, rewind. So people come from different places and other people have different standards than you do, different cultures, different routines, yada, da da da. But like, being clean, like coming from a different places and being clean, like coming from different places and growing up different, cool, like different cultures, that's cool. But just not being clean and like people telling you to be clean and you not doing it and you are affecting a whole flight and getting people sick because you want to use the bathroom and not wash your hands or take a shower and not use soap, leaving the bacteria from the body, from your body, on your body that day, just water doesn't wash off dirt. Like, it might wash the dirt off, but, like, the germs, like, you have to use... That's another video. That was stressful. They really didn't wash the whole time we were there. Their soap was just there for placement. They were taking faux showers. I just made up a word. I was... That made me depressed, bruh. Oh, my gosh. Mm. I forgot what I was talking about. But, yes, they give you immunizations because... People come from different places and people aren't used to certain people's germs and stuff and they just want to make sure nobody's getting sick. So they give you the shots and you just walk down and they line you up by whatever shot you're supposed to get. So you just walk down and they like shoot you in the arm. If you want to get out the like walking in a line, getting shot in the arm, wear long sleeves. It was what, 80 degrees in Texas and I was wearing long sleeve jackets every day because the rooms in there were so cold. But they had to put me in a separate room because I had to take my whole shirt off because I couldn't lift up the sleeve high enough. So that's how I got out of that. <clears throat> but yeah, they just line you up and you just go down a row and they just shoot you as you're going down the line. Just like, ew, ew, whatever shot you need until you're done and you walk out. And they just want to make sure that you're not bleeding and they kind of just shoot you anywhere. One lady said she hit like scar tissue in my arm or something and it was stupid painful. Like, my arms were numb for, like, three days. Thanks. But it doesn't, it's not, like, it doesn't, like, like hurt, like, you'll get over it, but. Oh, and here's how we're going to end the video for Zero Week. And this is just one of the videos for Zero Week. I'm going to do another video while you're here on what I wrote down, what happened during Zero Week. But this is just, like, the basic stuff that happens during Zero Week. So the last thing that happens is the initial BX run. So during the initial BX run, it's just a herd of you and your flight. And it's already crowded because it's a weekend. 
so you have to get all the essential things that you need. I remember asking my MTI, I was like, Master Sergeant Chatterow, uh, Sir, Airman, Les- Airman, Tranny Wesby reports is ordered. May I get lotion? And they're like, lotion's not an essential thing that you need. No. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just be ashy until the next BX run. We can actually, when we have time. But you get your herd of your flight. They walk you in there. They tell you whatever rules they tell you. Uh, they tell you like you have t- five minutes to get whatever you need and five minutes to check out. Literally impossible because the line is backed up through the whole entire store. So that was not realistic. But uh, they had us go in there and the basic things they had in there were like shower puffs, soap, deodorant, hair gel to lay your hair down, maybe ponytail holders, sports bras, underwear, feminine sanitary napkins, that's the word for it, pads and tampons, uh, razors for guys, uh, like Tupperware so you can organize your stuff, keep your stuff squared away. Yeah, and I, the BX run was low key useless for me. Oh yeah, they give you the Easy Pay card, um, so it's got four hundred dollars of your money on there. So don't think that they're just giving you four hundred dollars. It's taken out of your paycheck. And well, they actually say it's a range of three hundred to four hundred dollars. So it depends how much they decide to put in, or two hundred to. Oh yo, so it's a range from two hundred to four hundred dollars on there. And when you get up there, they scan, they know you're zero weekers because you have on civilian clothes. And they scan this thing. You pay for all the stuff that they give you when you get there. So like the book bag that they issue you, the soap, the deodorant that you don't use, that perk that gave people dandruff that I didn't use. I'm trying to think what other stuff was in there that I didn't use that I threw away immediately that I paid for. So you get up there and it was like $182.42 to be exact of things that you don't need some of the stuff you need but some of the stuff you don't need but you are paying for it regardless and that on top of this stuff that you need to buy from there like your essential items that you need to get and i remember the one item that i really wanted that i didn't see in the line i was like ma'am trini was be reports disorder and she was like what it was mass sergeant gonzalez i'm sad she got switched out of our flight I was like, ma'am, I need oil for my scalp because if I don't get oil for my scalp, then I'm going to break the position of attention and make a secondary movement and it's going to look me, make me look bad in formation because my scalp is itchy. And she looked at me like, huh? And I was like, I just need oil for my hair. And she was like, get you a wingman and go get it. And I just grabbed the closest person. Oh, it was Decker. Bro, I hated Decker in the beginning weeks. Like, I hated. She, and she knows it. No, but we're cool now. Um, but yeah, I grabbed somebody and I grabbed her and I was like, can you just come with me so I can get this oil for my hair? This, I just need to do this one thing. She was like, I mean, I, okay, I just, I guess, I mean, I need to get this other stuff. And I don't know why we need a wingman in the tiny, tiny BX we were in. It was not even a BX. It was a mini mall. But we needed a wingman to do that. So I got that and I was like, thank God I got my hair oil. And it was a good hair oil too. I still use that stuff. I got, I got another bottle for tech school. But, um, yeah, that's the one thing I really needed from the BX was, like, oil for my face so I could be moisturized and for my head so I wouldn't get dandruff. And it kept my hair nice and moisturized throughout BMT. That oil is the GOAT. That's the sole reason I passed BMT. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. But that's pretty much what happened through Zero Week. Oh, yo, and another weird thing. Let me tell you my first Zero Week night since you have made it this far into the venture of my video so since we were like last minute shippers there were maybe 10 of us and i think i was the only girl and it was so weird they made us do weird stuff at like 10 o'clock in the evening like we're walking through this place and i hear like little beeping chirping noises and it's in the atrium well alcatraz doesn't have it because alcatraz is depressing No, I'm just kidding. Alcatraz is just, it's just older, so they don't have the atrium. But the atrium is just like this huge, giant space of the perfect, optimum place to march. And it has this nice, open ceiling, but they have, like, these noises, these, like, it distracts you from hearing anything. Like, when our MTIs would be trying to call out commands, I cannot hear them because these little chirps were so loud. 
and it's like sounds that are supposed to imitate the sounds of a bird so the birds don't stay up in the atrium and like make nests there some birds still flew up there but they didn't stay up there because i guess the little sound thing worked but when you get to bmt and you hear that weird noise just remember airman weathersby told you it's weird but yeah we were walking around we got like locked out of a few buildings they didn't know how to get me up into my dorm the first night was weird and then when i arrived to my um dorm all the girls were awake just standing up asking the ecs on duty questions and i'm like oh ec stands for entry controller because we have lots of acronyms in the air force that you will soon learn if you are going to the air force or any branch of the armed forces so yeah i was just like super shook i was like i don't know what's going on um please just put me to bed i'm tired please yeah my zero week it just i mean zero week passed by dummy slow dummy wow what a good adjective it passed by extremely slow because you're just the whole time you're scared you're scared to speak you're scared to use the bathroom they're making you drink so much water i almost passed out but that's for another video almost passed out again whoop whoop de woo <laughs> but yeah but looking back like it wasn't that bad i made it through it i never cried myself to sleep some girls in my dorm told me that they did i'd never heard them cry themselves to sleep because your girl brought earplugs you'll see what you can bring during the video that i make of what you should pack bring you some earplugs yeah some girls like some girls snored didn't really hear them because i had earplugs um some girls like cry themselves to sleep i went to sleep and slept and was scared to be waken up at any moment by Reveille, the most terrifying sound known to mankind. No, I'm just kidding. But Reveille will haunt you uh, in your dreams. Yo, wait till y'all. There are so many videos I have for y'all. This is just, this is just the beginning. Wait till I make these videos for y'all. There's nothing else from Zero Week. Oh, uh, huh. how could I forget? This is about to be a long video going to the jail during zero week so you know how early in the video i said that they say attention in the squadron attention in the dormitory attention in the squadron attention in the dormitory we need any available mti's to come to the chow hall for zero week lunch or however they say it they have all the free mti's on duty they call them to come to the chow hall and scream at us so they they if you want to really experience BMT, be a chow runner doing zero week. If you want to experience what real stress and fear, anxiety, feelings of consternation are, be a chow runner during zero week. Be a chow runner for all of BMT. You'll be so stressed out. Like you'll, you will have completed your BMT experience if you're a chow runner. So they have the chow runners try to bring you into the defect. I'm going to talk about that during another video because that's that's a hot mess in itself. But basically, someone who came in the same day as you, because they're in your flight, they assigned them a task to bring you guys in. So they're like, uh, 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 uh flight 466, prepare to incident facility from the west side. Fly, 10, check. All keepers now fall off, all in, fall by the fourth element. They have to just yell this routine of words to bring you into the dining facility because everything is, like, calculated. So everything, like, has to go in order. So... They have to announce you to go in. And zero weekers mess up on that. That I mean, you'll be outside for 30 minutes until your child runners get their stuff together and know how to say their script correctly. So just be prepared to wait for that. And then y'all get to go inside and eat. <clears throat> and the child runners also have to uh, walk in to the snake pit and report to them. I wish I could be in there. for. And you don't want to get in there and get yelled at too. You don't want to be... And the crosshairs of that, especially if you're a advanced weaker, like if you're a seventh weaker and you're messing up doing dumb stuff and they're yelling at the zero weakers, then you look extra stupid because they're like, you're a seventh weaker, supposed to be setting the example to these zero weakers and you're messing up. So you're supposed to be on your A game at all times. You're supposed to be squared away at all times. But um, yes, so you walk in, whatever element they tell you, you're marching like a crazy broken robot because you don't know or rhythm is because you're too scared to do anything yeah so you're walking in and you're getting your food 
and you have to sign your name and say trainees post turn walk to the line stand at the position of attention you're not supposed to talk in line while you're waiting to get your food because that's you fixing to get yelled at so you just stand there at the position position of attention with a coordinated arm swing when you move each step until they tell you to post in for your food you grab the tray head and eyes straight forward grab your utensils oh set your tray you set your tray on the um little like assembly line thing and then you tell them what food you want except to make it more stressful you don't know how this food tastes you don't know if this food's good or not what this food is so you're pointing at the lunch that he's like i want this 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 and they're like hurry up hurry up let's go why don't you have your food together head nod straight forward heels together step side to side i want 12 inch steps heels together healthy choices hurry up let's go so you're sitting here like trying to get your food terrified like trying to give the lunch lady a reporting statement and she doesn't need one because she's a civilian she's just there to give you your food and you don't know what kind of food you're getting so you're just like, ma'am just give me anything mix it all together put in a smooth, smoothie blended like <laughs> you're not gonna eat it i didn't eat the first during zero week i didn't really eat because i was so shook and so stressed out and the food was disgusting never get the eggs the bacon's fake um yeah but we'll have a food we'll talk about food in another video you gotta stay tuned for all the videos stay tuned for the videos but um yeah they're just like screaming at you in line and if that's not enough because there's just line, there's a row of mtis just waiting to rip into your soul i've said this before and i'm saying it again because that's their job so you're sliding down trying to get food and like you want to get condiments because you know your food's unseasoned but you're too scared to move <laughs> and then you like you're trying to walk off properly with your tray and try to hit like facing movements and stuff like drill that you learn but you're not supposed to when you're marching so you're gonna get ripped into for that and then you have to there's the chow runner getting seated during zero week by the chow runner is a whole entire hot mess especially if you don't know like how you're supposed to go yes no come say hi this is miles Miles set off the fire alarm with this hot shower. My shower doesn't get that Who hot. You to? I'm making a video for YouTube. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're looking like nobody's nobody's there. I was like, I'm trying to find the face. Uh, <laughs> I'm so weak. Too. Oh my gosh. But yes. I was just trying to get clean. Uh but so you have your tray you're getting yelled at because you're not supposed to be doing facing movements with anything in your hand so you're walking da 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 trying to hit the facing movement get yelled at and then you're trying not to cry and they're like what are you making that face for can you can you keep it together trainee can you and go to your seat so you're walking up someone is there pointing to you telling you where to go front ma'am they either don't respond they just pass them up they go behind and the challenge is like I got the keys to, I have all the keys. I'm, I'm the custodian, I've got all the keys. I'm the master key smith, I don't know what the name for it is. I literally have all the keys. I said, front ma'am, front ma'am, front ma'am, as you like walk behind her. And there's an empty guy like waiting around the corner, around the pole, like, yes, this is my time. Did you not hear the chow runner? Are you being disrespectful to your wingman? They said, front ma'am, so what do you say back to them? You say, front ma'am, thank you ma'am. Are you disrespectful? Where's your integrity, trainee? Where, what's wrong with you, trainee? And you're sitting here like with your trainee like, I have no idea what's going on. So you just like walk in front of them and you just go take the tray down and sit down. But that's where you're wrong because you have to stand up the position of attention after you set your tray down for three seconds, three to five seconds, and then you can sit down and eat your food. You're not allowed to talk while you're eating. You're not allowed to anything. You just eat because you only have 10 minutes to eat. And while you're eating, they're like, are you smiling? And of course you're not smiling or talking because you're, well, some people were talking. But of course you're not doing anything because you're eating and just trying not to pass out. But the whole not speaking to the chow runner, ignoring the chow runner, not wearing to go, like messing up the whole line, that's hilarious. If you like drop your fork or anything, you have to walk back around the whole entire defect just to get a fork so hopefully you didn't get sat on the opposite side because then you have to walk all the way around and they'll yell at you the entire time while you're getting your utensil that i mean if you drop something 
during zero, just leave it. I mean, pick it up and like put it away, but don't. Oh, dessert, getting dessert during chow. There's so many videos for you guys. Hey! Oh wow, where'd you bring me? Uh, this is not mine. I got my dry cleaning done. Oh, how nice. So I don't get killed at open eggs. Okay. Hi YouTube, is that what we're doing? We have disgusting Swiffer American dusters, I got apple oatmeal, sauce. Oatmeal, camelback. Okay. Do they say you can wear a camelback during with your peachy stuff? Uh, I mean, it's just plain black. We can wear these, so. What are they gonna say, we can't drink water? I mean, it's logical to me, but we're gonna, I'm gonna find out for you, YouTube, and she will report on whether you I will do report. that or not. Amber Weathersby reports. Okay, I'm Airman Weathersby. <laughs> I am American Airman. I, I, you're not at the position of attention. Is that a secondary movement at the position of attention? <laughs> Dang, I forgot what I was talking about. I knew somebody was gonna walk up and throw me off my course. I mean, there's gonna be plenty of other videos explaining exactly what happens during when, so you'll know about it eventually. But that's all for the video today. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe down below. If you have any questions, make sure you add me on social media at Kristen Legs on Instagram. Comment in my DMs. Like, I'm really fast with commenting back on my DMs and Instagram. Don't follow me on Snapchat. I just recently redeleted it again for like the 50th time. I'm not downloading Snapchat again. I only downloaded it again because of peer pressure. That's off topic. Um, oh, and I'm going to make like a Facebook page of me doing other different stuff. But with these videos up here too. But the Facebook one's more interactive because YouTube, you can only do so much. So make sure you follow my Facebook page. When I get it up and running, make sure you're on the lookout for that. Look at my other videos. Turn on that notification bell. So you can see when I post my newest videos about whatever, about whatever I've been making videos about. And now it's time for the last part of the video, which is prayer. Um, yeah, I always end my videos like this. You should know this by now. All right. So let's see what to pray about today. Patience. You know, yes, patience would be a good one. Patience is a virtue. Is someone going to walk up again? See, I told you, someone's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're watching this, I just want to get famous. So if you can make me famous somehow, just you know. make me famous first. Uh, Subscribe to my channel. Though, like, she'll put my my information and stuff in her description. I can do that for you. I All can right. just give me whatever yeah, it she'll is. She'll link my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook. You can add me on everything. Ask me for my Snapchat though, because I don't just give it out to everybody. All right. All right, so prayer for patience. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing this viewer to this video, as always. Um, I pray for patience for me and for this viewer. I pray that we have an increase of patience, and I thank you for, you know, increasing us to grow and giving us a test of patience rather than just immediately giving us patience. You're worthy, your glory of, you're worthy of all the praise. I glorify and lift your name. You're good. There's no good like you. I'm putting you in the center of everything. I love you. In your holy mighty name, amen. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. This is Airman Weathersby reporting, and good night. <laughs> I have to work my broadcasting voice. LOL.